today I'm going to be sharing my thoughts on this book, Sisters of Sword and Song by Rebecca Ross. This is actually my third book that I've read by Rebecca Ross. She wrote the Queen's Rising duology, so it's the Queen's Rising and the Queen's Resistance, which I really, really liked Queen's Rising. Um, Queen's Resistance was still good, but I almost missed like some of the magic that, I don't know, I felt in the first book. I didn't necessarily feel the whole time in the second book. So I got this book as part of the Lit Joy Crate. So it is a signed edition here. Um, I don't know if the inside covers are different when you do Lit Joy Crate. This is the inside, which I thought is really cool art. Um, and then here too. So I quite liked this copy. I was very excited to see this book. Um, it's kind of funny. I do hope to maybe share what Lit Joy Crate has in it in the future. Um, but for some reason, <laughs> my account got kind of screwy because even though I ordered um, a three month subscription and then it's supposed to renew automatically, um, I, I think it was a problem that I did, so I'm not blaming them at all. But um, I got credited as a gift subscription, so then it doesn't renew if it's a gift subscription. So I'm missing out on these like two months, um, but hopefully I'll be able to get it. I think for October, the October crate, hopefully I will get. Because um, so far I really like them. I like the, the book choices. I'm a little bit sad I missed, I'm trying to remember if it was the August crate, um, The Princess Will Save You Now, which I'm still going to read anyway, but I'm just sad I didn't get the crate for that one because it looked like there was going to be a lot of good things in it, but it's okay. I can get past it. So now on to this book. So the book is a fantasy and its setting is, um, in my opinion, very similar to like ancient Greece or Rome. And there's a mythology for this world that there's um, a variety of gods and the gods have had these um, relics that they have left on the world. Um, and right in the beginning of the book, one, there's a nice map in this book, but two, so right in the beginning of the book, there are the nine divines and their earthly relics. So this tells you about the different gods and their relics, <clears throat> and also whether or not the relics are currently missing. And that all figures into the events that occur in the book. So I really liked the setup because I love classical mythology and, you know, just the study of all of that. And I think usually their stories are good. So it's interesting seeing this world's mythology and the tales there. Um, for example, there is the god, let me see if I can find him here, uh, Kyrkos. I hope I'm saying that right, because I don't live in the world <laughs> of the book. Um, but Kyrkos was the god of the wind, and he is a fallen god. And what's interesting is that Kyrkos is actually the sire for the main family of this book. So they're all of his descendants. Well, family are <laughs> his descendants. Um, so now to get into the story itself. So the story is about two sisters, Evadne and Helkian. And in the beginning of the book, it opens with Evadne. And Evadne is getting ready for her sister's arrival the next day. Um, it doesn't tell you this for a little bit, but it, it turns out that when they were little, Evadne was attacked by a dog and Helkion came to her rescue, and because of her bravery, she was actually taken away to begin training for a soldier. So she's part of the military, and she's been gone for about seven years at this point, and they're still really young, so seven years is most of their lives they've been away from each other, so they're very excited for this reunion. Evadne is a little bit jealous of Helkion because she's gotten this opportunity, whereas Evadne feels stuck in her homeland, and she, because of the dog bite, um, she has trouble walking with her ankle. It occasionally gives her problems, so she struggles with this whole thing about how, I don't know, it just seems like Helkian has been better than her. Um, so the next scene we get um, is that night before Helkian is due to arrive. The family has their traditional um, dinner and singing, and then Evadne goes up to bed. But when she gets to her bedroom, Helkion is already there, and she, of course, is shocked, and she's like, Sister, what are you doing here? So Helkion tells Evadne that there's going to be a group 
that are coming for her Helkion uh, the next day. And Avadne is like, why? What happened? What's going on? And Helkion tells her, I can't tell you because if I tell you, then they'll know that I was here and that you're trying to cover for me. Um, but essentially just know that it was an accident. I didn't mean for anything to happen. Um, and I have to get out of here. Um, so you're not going to see me tomorrow, but don't let anyone else know that I was here and I can't tell you where I'm going or else they'll try to get that from you. Um, so essentially the, the two sisters, um, one of Adne gets some supplies for Halkion so that when she leaves, she'll have a little bit of food or other supplies. Um, but two, Halkion did really want to see her sister before she took off. Um, so she does leave and um, Avadne is left behind wondering what is going on with her sister and if there's anything that she can do. So fast forward to the next day, um, the troop arrives and it is actually the command that Halkion was serving under, including her commander, Lord Stratton. And uh, when Lord Stratton gets to the door, um, her parents are kind of like, oh, this is a surprise, you know, we're expecting Helkion today, and we're so excited, we didn't know that you would be here too as part of her, I don't know, welcome party? I don't, I don't really know, uh, I can't remember now what they were saying, but they were like, oh, I'm surprised you're here, Commander. Um, and, you know, the, the Commander's kind of playing it coy, he's like, oh, is she supposed to arrive today? Well, let's just see, you know, if she arrives, and how that's going, and so they invite him into the house, and they're all sitting together, and they're waiting for Halkion to arrive, and time is passing, and she's not arriving, and finally Lord Stratton goes, um, I don't think that she's coming here, or I think that she's already been here, and of course Halkion's parents are flabbergasted, they have no idea, like, why she's not there, they don't understand what's going on, Avadne's trying to act like she has no idea what's going on, but of course she has some suspicion, um, and so they, they play sort of this game against each other, not really a game, but they're, um, you know, the commander's trying to get anything out of the family that he can, and none of them are surrendering any information, and of course part of that is because Helkion didn't give any information to them, most especially, um, really just to Avadne, because she didn't talk to her parents at all. Um, and long story short, the commander ends up leaving by going, we're after Halkion, she will be arrested. And they, of course, the parents are like, why? Well, actually, even Avadne was like, why? Why will she be arrested? And, um, they tell them that Halkion has committed murder, and that she killed her shield mate, um, who just happens to be the Lord Stratton, aka the commander's son, Xander, and whew, they're totally shocked because why would she kill her shield mate, supposed partner and best friend, uh, Xander, and they're just in awe of that. Then we jump over to Halkion, so we do get to see some of her perspective, and we do know that she did kill Xander, but we're not really sure of the reasoning. You know, it's just revealed bit by bit, but really she's just trying to flee because she doesn't want to be captured and punished for his death because, one, she didn't intend for him to die, um, and, you know, <laughs> two, she doesn't want to be caught because she doesn't want to be punished. But anyway, <laughs> so we see her fleeing, and um, at one point she is trying to steal I mean, she doesn't really want to steal, but she's going hungry now, so she ends up attempting to steal from this land, um, which just so happens to be owned by this family where the one boy was kind of a jerk when they were younger, and he's still kind of a bully. Um, and so he wants to sort of punish her on his own. Um, before that all happens, um, they do end up turning her in. Um, and so she does get captured, she does get arrested, um, she is punished for fleeing the military, um, she's actually whipped by one of the higher up officers, but not the commander, um, and then she will have to go back for trial. So the next big part involves her trial, um, the family travels out so that they can attend the trial to support her, 
Um, along the way, they're robbed by this unscrupulous mage. Um, and so they, they arrive to the trial kind of tired and hungry because all of their stuff was stolen. Uh, and so they're already downhearted just over everything. Everything seems to be going terrible for this poor family. So they sit in on the trial and everybody is just essentially kind of throwing Halkion under the bus. Um, they say that she was you know, with Xander and that they might have had a relationship and they just think that she killed him for some reason. Um, but nobody really sticks up for her or does anything for her. Um, so it's, it's kind of a mess of a trial. Um, she herself does get to speak and she talks about how she and Xander were training, but they were training blindfold for some reason. And um, because she was blindfolded, she couldn't see that he was um, giving up the fight, that he was saying he was done. Um, so she did accidentally kill him, and she fled in fear of what was going to happen. Um, which is all really very sad, but, but because it actually happened, she knows there's not much she can do to avoid the punishment that's coming for her. Um, and meanwhile, from Evadne's perspective, she's taking in this horrible trial against her sister. She's feeling very torn up inside because she's already missed seven years with her sister. Um, and this just doesn't look good. Whatever the outcome is of this trial, it doesn't look good for their relationship. And she's very torn up about it. Um, and meanwhile, she's observing the Lord Stratton's family because, of course, they're all there as the family of the victim. And... So we have Lord Stratton, his wife, um, their daughter, and their other son, um, Damon. And she's kind of intrigued by the family, kind of especially Damon. I don't know, there's a, a moment between the two of them when the trial is still going on. Um, but of course she pushes that away because she feels bad for the family, but she's also really worried about her sister. That's really her main thing is her sister. Um, so when the trial ends, um, Halkion is sentenced to five years at this labor quarry, and then she has five years of another sentence. I can't remember if that was for a prison or something else, but there's another five years of punishment. And then five years where she'll have to work in servitude to Lord Stratton's family in reparation for murdering Xander. Um, so that's 15 years, and Avadne just can't imagine... 15 more years of Halkion's life gone away where she can't communicate with her family and she won't get to see her and all those other joys that go along with it plus where she's being sent is kind of dangerous so Avadne just goes uh hey wait <laughs> is there any way that I can take half of her punishment which is amazing and I just I Part of me is like, I can't really imagine doing that, but maybe? <laughs> I'm like, is my sisterly bond that strong? I'd like to think so, but I don't know. Plus, I mean, if there was the whole act of murder, I don't know. Like, even though it was an accident, so maybe. <laughs> maybe if it was something that was like that, maybe I could. Um... So she wants to take seven and a half years and have Halkion take seven and a half years. And then by the end, they could just move on and it's done. Um, but they don't accept that, um, I guess for a myriad of reasons, but they do allow her to take five years of the sentence. So as it turns out, they will send Halkion to the quarry to begin her five years there. And then she'll still have the five years of the further punishment um, but they're going to have, or allow, I guess, Evadne to take the five years of servitude under Lord Stratton. So the next morning, um, Halkion will be sent to the quarry, and Evadne will be sent to Lord Stratton's house. All fine and good. Um, during the night, um, Damon, son of Lord Stratton, actually comes to Evadne and takes her over to see Halkion before they're split. So they do have a brief run in there. And plus it's interesting about um, the whole fact that technically Avadne and Damon should be kind of at odds with one another, um, just due to their whole relationship of 
her sister just murdered his brother. Um, but he seems to be kind of okay with Evadne or, you know, just the fact that he's willing to help Helkion kind of hints that there might be more going on with this whole story than what we've been told so far. So essentially the sisters see each other and we'll just move on. If you want, <laughs> want the details, read the book. Um, after that, um, Evadne does travel with Lord Stratton's family back to his house while Halkion goes on to the quarry. And Evadne's travels um, with the family, she she's in kind of an odd position as the sister of Xander's murderer, um, where part of the family doesn't want to accept her, but also the serving staff, who she's supposed to be working with, are also kind of harsh with her and to her. Um, and so at one point she gets so frustrated that she goes off kind of on her own into the outside world. That sounds really weird, but she goes off outside. Um, however, there's danger to this because as I said about the whole gods and everything, there is actually um, a kind of malevolent thing that happens at night where uh, I think she's called Avina will send out her shadows, as it's called, so they're kind of creatures or something, but it will personify in whatever you are most afraid of. And so in Evadne's case, um, it's dogs because of the whole dog attack when she was younger. Um, and so she essentially ends up having to be saved by these spirits. And uh, it's Damon, of course, that comes to her rescue. Um, and so there is kind of this relationship that's starting to build with them and it's very interesting and you sort of got to wonder what's going to happen there. So we'll hop to, uh, after they get to the house, uh, Avadne begins her servitude uh, there at the house. Um, she has to do different tasks. I think when she starts she's like cleaning floors and she, her hands are getting kind of eaten up by lye. Um, and then I think she moves on to a wine server for the family. So she actually has to taste test to make sure it's not poisoned and then serve them the wine, um, which is an upgrade from cleaning the floors, but at the same time she could be poisoned. Um, but I think it was essentially because the, the servant who normally does it, there was an accident with them. Um, but after a little while of serving the family and also talking with Damon um, and getting to know the whole thing. Um, so she discovers a little bit more about the family. So one of the things that she discovers in her whole journeying with the family and meeting him to begin with that I forgot to mention, and it's so important, is that Damon is actually a mage. So he has the ability to use magic. Uh, mages are at different levels. Uh, apparently he's kind of middle grade <laughs> magic user, um, which he's kind of disappointed about, but you know, what can you do? Um, so in her course of working with the family, she starts to get to know him better and finds out that he, since he's new, to being a mage and graduating, I guess you would call it graduating, into magedom. Um, <laughs> he is actually in need of a scribe, and the scribe writes down the spells for the mage. It's kind of a complicated magic system in that sense, like of why they need the scribe and on and on. Um, so if you want to know more about that, you can read the book. Um, but essentially they have to have somebody that can write it down because uh, I think when they try to write their spells, the words will go away. Um, so they do need a, a scribe for that. And uh, long story short, uh, Avadne ends up <laughs> being asked to be Damon's scribe. Uh, he kind of doesn't want to have whomever his aunt will try to force on him, forced upon him. So he chooses Avadne and asks her to be his scribe. She accepts and they become bonded as mage and scribe. That sounds deeper than it 
probably needs to, but anyway, they become mage and scribe. And then the main plot and reason behind the book is revealed, and that is that um, Xander and Halkion were actually training to undergo this mission to find some of the missing divine relics because they're hoping that those objects of power will be able to stop this horrible plan to take over the leadership of their empire. So essentially the queen has been being um, magically persuaded by Damon and Xander's aunt, Selene, who is also a mage, and she's very powerful, like extremely powerful, and they believe that she has been putting spells on the queen to keep her uh, brainwashed and under control. So one, they need these objects of power to break that spell, but also just to take on Selene. So Halkion and Xander were supposed to be going and getting the, I believe it's the all-seeing crown? Let me just see. Yes. So they were supposed to be getting the all-seeing crown, which they were hoping that once it was on the queen's head would allow her to see the uh, bad things <laughs> that have been happening to her so that she can fix the country on her own. Um, but now that Xander is dead, they have to revamp. <laughs> they, they have to redo their plan. Um, and so it, it's going to fall back on Damon to follow through with the plan. And so he's trying to come up with a plan to get the all-seeing crown and also defeat Selene and restore the queen and her power. So that is revealed to be the whole impetus of the book. That's what has set this whole thing into motion. Um, that is what they have to do. They have to defeat Selene. They have to restore the queen. They have to get these objects of power. Um, and now it all falls on Damon and Evadne. But we do also get to see a little bit more about Halkion because even though she's in the quarry, there's stuff that's going on there that is also going to fall back into that main plot and needs to be done in order to restore the country. I'm not going to give all of that away because this is a very good book and I think that it should be read and enjoyed and not spoiled by me. Um, just it's, it is very good. <laughs> um, I was surprised reading it as it was getting towards the end and I was starting to think is this going to become a series or is this really a standalone because I I couldn't see how everything was going to wrap up by the end. It did though. Um, I liked the ending. I thought it was well done. So I definitely felt like I need to tell others to read this book if they have not yet. Um, this book did just come out in June, I think, of this year, so it's still a fairly new book. Um, and I'm, I'm so happy about how good it is because I was looking forward to this one and I wanted to see what um, Rebecca Ross would do next. And um, yeah, I think she might be a newer favorite of mine. I, I so far have enjoyed her books. And there's definitely always a lot going on. It's, there's usually like a, a political spin to the fantasy. Um, which isn't that uncommon for fantasy if you read a lot of fantasy like I do. You're probably like, oh, that's like all of them. There's always some kind of political upheaval or something that the people have to do. And yeah, that is pretty much the truth. Hmm. <laughs> Truths uncovered, power growing, uh, political upheaval. Yeah, it's pretty much fantasy. Um, so I will say if you enjoy any of those things, <laughs> you probably will really like Sisters of Sword and Song. Um, it's, it's good. This book is also great if you like family dynamic and interpersonal relationships with like family, um, because just seeing that relationship between Avadne and Helkion and the lengths that they will go for one another. Um, and I probably spoke a lot of Avadne and she is 
kind of more the central character, but really there's a lot with Halkion, uh, most of which I didn't get into because I don't want to spoil the whole story, but Halkion is definitely a central character, and she really fights for and will do what it takes to help and save Avadne. Um, Avadne is a top concern of hers. It's not just, oh, this is my sister. It's, you know, I care about this person. They are a major concern of mine. And I just like that family dynamic. Plus, um, their mom and dad are pretty cool, especially their dad. Um, you do get to see him in different parts, and I like their dad. He's, he's pretty awesome. I don't know, I'll say awesome, but he just is a really good dad. He'd be the kind of dad, like, everybody's like, yeah. I'm like thinking TV dad, but <laughs> like the classic TV dad. He's kind of like classic TV dad. I was just thinking, you don't get to see too much of the mother. I mean, she is present and protective. So you definitely see her. But for some reason, the dad really sticks out to me. And they have an extended family, too. So they just have a great family dynamic there. But also Lord Stratton's family. I really enjoy. Um, and you do get to see more bits of them, too. Because you would think they would be, I don't know, harsher, I guess, because of the events between Halkion and Xander. But in the end, most of them will do what's right. Um, except for Lord Stratton's sister, who is the main villain of the piece, as Lady Selene. <sighs> well, well, you know, can't win them all. But the rest of the family is pretty devoted and dedicated and willing to do what's right, like even setting aside grievances in order to actually do the right thing. Um, so I've really enjoyed that. I think, I think this is enjoyable on many levels and for many different readers. You do sort of have to have um, an interest in fantasy, but other than that, um, if you like classical mythology and tales that are similar to that, then this is a great choice. If you like, like I said, family stories, uh, this is a great one. And if you like fantasy, this is an excellent one. So those are my thoughts. So that's it for this video, but I will be back with more book recommendations and reviews and who knows what else? I'll be back with more bookish things. <laughs> Until next time, bye!